In this section, the first part of exponential and logarithmic equations, we are going to solve logarithmic equations using the properties of logarithms. All right, so the first property of logarithms, we can recall that if log base a of m is equal to log base a of n, then the two values themselves have to be equal. Okay. Again, if you have log of base a of m equal to log of the same base a of n, then the two values are equal. So starting with the first example, notice we have 2 log base 4 of x equal to log base 4 of 9. If we wanted to solve this equation using this property of logarithms, you would have to get it into the form of log base a of m equal log base a of n. Notice the coefficients here in front of the logs is 1. We don't always write it, but we know it's there. There is no numbers in front of the log. So in order to use this property, I have to make sure that there's one log on one side of the equal sign, one log on the other side of the equal sign, in which they have the same base a, and no coefficients in front of the log. And then I could go ahead and drop the logs and just make the values equal to each other. Looking here, notice I have a two in front of the log and the log on the right here um, is okay. So I just have to fix this part on the left side. The bases are the same, they're four. So once I can go ahead and make it into the form in the definition, I can just go ahead and make the values equal to each other. Okay, so we have 2 log base 4 of x equal to log base 4 of 9. So you, you can recall the power rule of logs where if you had a coefficient in front of the log, you were allowed to take that coefficient and bring it up as an exponent on its value. So we will use this to bring the 2 up on the value x as an exponent. So 2 log base 4 of x is log base 4 of x squared equal to log base 4 of 9. Notice here our logs have no coefficients in front of each. The bases are the same, so now we could go ahead and use this property of logarithms to say that x squared must be equal to 9. So x squared equal to 9 means that if I took square root of each side, I would have x equal to plus or minus 3. Also, you could have moved the 9 over and got x squared minus 9 equals 0, factored it as a difference of 2 squares, and used the zero product property to get x equal negative 3 and 3, which is the same as x equals plus or minus 3. So this was just another way you could have solved it. So x equals plus or minus 3. Now we have to remember the domain for logs. Remember that logarithms are functions in which the value attached to the log must be positive. In this case, our value attached to the log is x and our value over here attached to the log is 9. Well, 9 always remains positive, so we're okay. That's a number that won't change. x changes depending on what we plug in. So this value x has to be positive or, in other words, strictly greater than 0. So if I have x equal to 3 or x equal to negative 3, notice if I plugged in negative 3, up here, this part would be negative and it wouldn't lie 
in the definition of a log. So we exclude this value from the solution and we only have one solution in which x equals 3. I would like to note that these type of values that we have thrown out in the rational equation module, logarithmic equation module, the, um, the square roots with even indices module, these are called extraneous solutions. So hence the prefix extra means it's just an extra solution we get by default of algebra.